Good evening. The time is 7.02 p.m. And I'm calling to order the City Council regular meeting, announcing that the quorum is present. Uh, everyone, please stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. But everyone, please um, bow your head and close your eyes if you like. Heavenly Father and gracious God, we invite your presence as we gather. We pray for your wisdom and for your guidance in all the business that we conduct and affairs that we will bring up and discuss. Give us compassionate hearts that we might take, that we might make decisions for the benefit for all for who we serve. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. You may be seated. Let's see, uh, non agenda um, item public comments are on the white card, the yellow card is the uh, agenda item public comments. Uh, comments um, on the non agenda item public card, uh, comments will be taken from audience on non-agenda related items for a length of time not to exceed three minutes per person. Uh, agenda item, public comments, yellow card. These comments will be taken from audience on non-agenda and agenda items combined for a length of time not to exceed five minutes total per person on items except for public hearings. Comments on public hearings, uh, items must be made when the item comes before council and not to exceed two minutes per person. No action or discussion may be taken by council during public comments on uh, non-agenda items. To address City Council, please complete the white, yellow card and present it to the City Secretary prior or does any prior to the meeting. All right. Um, let's see, we'll start with Mr. Robert. Let's see, sir. Yeah. Uh, five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Robert uh, Battle. Um, if you'd like to hear some truth about what's been happening in our city for the last 50 years, uh, please go to my Facebook page, Mainer Community Coalition. And you have to search down in their long essays. If you want Cliff's Notes, don't go there. If you want to see pictures of your cat, don't go there. One thing I want to understand is what a public hearing is. To me, that's a chance for a short version of a town hall, meaning the public gets to hear from staff, council, and developers, and the public gets to be heard by all those people. And then when they're done, people, the people, get some answers. So during my public hearings, I'd like to stand near the podium and wait to get my answers, if that's okay. I think it'd be a nice show of manners if before each public hearing item, you told everybody who's gonna talk and when they're gonna talk. So I don't have to wonder, am I gonna speak on this or not? Now, a lot of things on here tonight are because of this grotesque abomination you guys call the comprehensive plan. You spent $318,000 on it. You've never even finished it. It's full of lies. Everyone up here on the dais I'm looking at knows exactly what I'm talking about. For those in the audience, we have a 200 acre park. They don't even know the name of it. The mayor will never say the words Woodlands Park. There's no parking problem there. It's a one mile nature trail. It's the best little loop in our whole city. It's not even on our website. I'm standing next to the guy who's in charge of our IT department. Why can't we get our parks on the website, sir? Why can't we get these pictures up on the streaming thing at home? I mean, that's a one HDMI cable. We're supposedly a regional leader. Rockdale does better job covering their town halls. Now I'm discovering that we have a new entity that's on our uh, organization chart in the wrong place. It's called the Planning and Zoning commission. It's not a committee. It doesn't need Scott Dunlop to be the liaison, the gatekeeper, the censor. It's a commission. 
quasi-independent. That commission has its own secretary. UVA is not the secretary for the Planning and Zoning Commission. They set their own agenda. If you guys are never going to go back and revisit the public, the uh, comprehensive plan, 605 pages that you can't even read, maybe the Planning and Zoning Commission needs to. Maybe they need to do the five town halls, the five town halls that we got ripped off for. But we have to empower them. You guys don't even have an instruction manual for your committee members, I don't believe, or your commissioners. They're in the wrong place. They're not a board. On the organization chart in the budget, they are listed as a board. They're not a board. In the codes, it says board or commission, or is used in the disjunctive sense. So let's empower these people. You guys don't have time to do this job the way it's needed. I propose that we start paying our council members 40000 a year, and you guys do this during the day. You just pass the thing. Here's Scott Dunlop's his strategy. He puts like 25 things in an agenda item, like the one he did about park land and park land, and you guys are just overwhelmed, have no idea what it is, so what do you do? Well, if Scott Dunlop wants it, we'll, do, we'll vote for it. You guys don't even know what the word historic district is. It's been a historic district in Old Manor since 2017. The words historic district are not even in the comprehensive plan. Do you hear what I'm saying? 95 townhomes by the cemetery is not historic. 400 apartments right here, 1,500 people, 716 cars next to the Lions Club. Are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Do you not understand we have a traffic problem right here already? And you want to put 716 more cars there? You saw what happened in the fire in Hawaii. We get winds like that here. I've been in California during a fire, forest fires. I've had to evacuate three times in California. That could happen here like that, man. If we got the wrong breeze and the wrong wind and the right sparks, those people could never get out of there. Now, I'm not sure what uh, Parkland and uh, this ordinance number 714, really how it finally shook out. I don't think anyone does know. The lawyer that gave an opinion on it has no idea. I'm talking about Audrey Guthrie. She had no idea whatsoever. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we'll have um, uh, Ms. Dow Davis. This one you have three minutes. Hello, uh, good evening. My name is Jerry Dowell Davis. I live in the Stonewater subdivision. I'm here to bring awareness to the growing abandoned, stray and neglected problem we have here in Maynard. We do currently have an ACO officer, but his ability to help is limited. Citizens are left to help rescue animals, feed strays and care for abandoned animals. On July 1st, a deceased dog was found by a citizen and her child while walking on Dolly Madison. She notified 911 and was put to the sheriff's office. They did pick up the animal and there is an open animal cruelty case. On July 3rd, four puppies were dumped in multiple backyards in Stonewater. Our ACO was on duty that day. He did rescue two of the puppies Myself and another neighbor took the other two and found them homes. Starting in April, myself and a nonprofit trappers tried to catch a dog living in the watershed behind Stonewater. Um, another resident called our ACO. She was told, if he's not injured, I cannot help you. The dog lived in the watershed for four months. She was able to find a rescue and trap him on August 10th, he was rescued. The temperatures reached 106 that day. There have been multiple dog attacks in Stonewater on animals and humans in the four years I have lived here. Some residents do not feel comfortable walking through their neighborhood because this is a safety concern for our community. As we grow and plan, we need a plan to help control the animals of Maynard. We currently have many city ordinances they really don't seem to be enforced. There are no services offered to residents. 
vaccination clinics, rabies clinics, spay and neuter clinics. These are no cost to the city. These are usually nonprofit organizations that come to your city and offer the services. As we grow, the problem will grow if not planned for. We have many new businesses coming to Maynard. Will they be left to deal with the problem the same way the residents are? We cannot rely on ACC to help with Maynard's animal problem. As a growing and forward-thinking community, a new plan towards animals and the way they are treated is needed. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearings. Conduct a public hearing on fiscal year 2023-2024 proposed property tax rate of the city of uh, Maynard, Texas. Uh, Ms. Collins. Mayor, Council, before you have the proposed uh, property tax rate for the um, upcoming fiscal year, uh, it is staff's recommendation that the city adopt the tax rate of 0.6789, which is our de minimis rate, um, which would be effectively dropping uh, the tax rate from the current of 0 0.7470. And even with the decrease, the average uh, home that is valued, at, I'm sorry, appraised at $273,000 would see an increase of $41.22 over the course of the year. Any comments, Council Parsons? I'll start. Um, I know we've had some workshops and talked about this. Um, uh, I do um, have concern of, as far as how big of the drop is. One, because at some point in time, um, like I said, we're, we're looking to add different things. We got some bond stuff that we're looking at. And my concern is if we drop too low, then we won't be able to staff the programs that we're trying to bring to the community. And um, and then we have to ask the community to raise the rate later on, and I'm not sure that we'll get that support if we drop down too far. Um, Based on um, and we're talking about just the programs. Or are we talking well, the program, bonds the or have staff? So if we're talking about additional staff for programs, um, some of the facilities that we're talking looking at. Um, uh, animals, animal control center, all those kinds of things that are required of staff. And if we drop too low, we won't have, we'll be, we'll be doing a huge savings, but then we'll be putting ourselves further out to be able to staff some of those positions um, by dropping, go, going at it low. And if we find ourselves, if we need to go back up higher, then we would then have to go back to the voters and ask the voters to raise the tax rate up so that we can get the money to staff you know, those things that we're trying to construct facilities on. So that's my concern is we we, we said last year that we would, we would look at an incremental uh, decrease, you know, easing down um, so that we could ensure that as we're building facilities for public use, that we can staff those departments. Um, if we go too far, we'll, we'll, we'll not allow it, and we won't be able to do that. That's my concern. Um, every department in here, is growing, city services and needs are growing, and it will go too far down. I just don't think we're going to be able to get the support to go up the way the economy is. Well, I can tell you that uh, with the assistance of the financial advisor, Chris Lane, we did build in a 5% into the O&M 
um, over the course of the next uh, 30 years. Really, our short term is a 10 year. And we did include a 5% growth into the O&M to help with the, uh, with, the staffing, it, with the staffing needs as those facilities do come online. Um, but I don't know that we saw those projections in. You did. It was in the program. chart that, that was handed out. Well, we saw that one, but I, but we had projected further out when we were looking at those. We didn't look at it in the immediate time period, and that's the concern. In the what? We didn't look at it at the immediate time period. We didn't look at how many folks. We didn't look at um, um, how many folks per building. We didn't look at the. Um, that was covered in part of the needs assessment. Mm -hmm. um, the that was, that was separate from the actual budget. Like when we had our budget workshop, we never went into this. Is, this percentage is going to cover this increase for these folks down the line. That's well, that's the that's percentage. true, but I just have a ballpark number mm -hmm. of what that five percent is going to be over the over the course of the next ten years, and with that with that five percent for the operation and maintenance, mm -hmm. it is calculated, and there that goes. Not all the way across the uh, each of the departments, but it is factored in there. It may we may not have delved into the details of that uh, during the workshop. So you're saying the five percent covers also the request, the normal request from staff that, that they're requesting for increases in the in the regular departments, the increase the creation of new departments and the staff and the resources and funds um, for those departments. The five percent was including in we utilize that five percent in for the operation and maintenance of where the city was going to be based off of population of what projected population with the seven percent growth i just don't think i don't feel comfortable doing it um going that far down because we didn't do a side by side with it so i can't ask i can't mm -hmm. ask the questions comfortably on it that if we say if we construct a facility the um, uh, like one of the ideas we've been talking about is the um, uh, facility that's going to have the animal control and all that kind of stuff. So if we construct that, I have not looked, I have not seen the side by side that I've calculated would show that we can cover the cost of the staff and the ongoing cost of growth for that. So if we stay, if we go before, I'm sorry, if we go higher than the 0.6789, mm -hmm. we will have an election. That's what I'm saying. If we go no, we'll have we'll have an election on the tax rate, and the tax rate will not be in effect until after the uh, we'll call a, a special election. Well, no, because we can do what we did last year. That's how we handled it last year. Last year, we issued a ten million dollar tax note that we used for roads, road improvement, infrastructure. Um, taking care of Hill Lane and, and a ton of other uh, overdue projects that the city needs. And mm -hmm. so there's still, there's still a long list of, of, of road projects that we're going to need, things that we need to fix. And so if we're able to take advantage and use these resources to immediately attack the, the long overdue projects, whether it be with roads, infrastructure, water, rich water drainage, and I, that's my thought is that that would be a better use than dropping down um, with those numbers and then at some point in time, we're going to have to come back to people and ask them for an increase because we just don't know what the market's going to do. But what we do know is if we go keep going down incrementally, we can do the things that we're doing to take care of those roads. Um, we have a long list of capital improvement projects, water and wastewater that we that we really need to do to ensure that we're safe and, and good to go for years to come. Um, that was my comment at the, at the board workshop. Um, and our workshop regarding that, I think, going down incrementally. I said last year, I said again this year. Um, going down, dropping down too far um, puts us in a situation where we won't have the resources and we're going to have to, at some point in time, ask to go back up and it's going to be too difficult. And we also don't want to do that not in, in those projections, not be able to pull the staff, people have to let people go. On top of doing compensation increases to get all of our employees to market uh, rates so that they can have uh, uh, a livable wage and be able to afford to stay here. There's a lot of things we're doing financially, and I'd rather not take the chance. Um, I mean, we're being conservative with the rates. We should be conservative with our decreases so that we can ensure that we're taking care of the things that we need to. 
Well, the decrease, uh, and I was maybe I was under the wrong impression of the thirty million in in bond issuance that you know we could be doing. Uh, so, are you saying that that's on top of that? What do you mean? Well, you're you're mentioning additional projects. Is it is it more than the thirty million that we had already projected out? In those uh, obligations? Yes. Uh, what else? Um, are you talking about the list of bond projects and uh, yeah? CIA I'm I'm just trying to understand, just to make sure that I give you the or that well, I give yes, the correct the response. Yes, the capital improvement project is, is extremely long, so it is way there's a ton of stuff that we need to do. Plus, we have our our um our list of road projects that we've kind of estimated out that we're going to fund through a number of different to, um uh, either local funds or rebates from Capital Metro. Um, mm -hmm. We got from there, but there's still a long list of other roads. And, and the cities uh, that, that that need to be done. There's um, a lot of long-term requests for sidewalks. So if we went and did the same thing, we could start knocking off those long-term uh, projects that we haven't had a chance to get a hold to um, for for that for downtown area and, and elsewhere. So that's why I'm not saying that we're dropping out when when we can afford to to get the bond, um, keep our rate in incrementally going down and then also take care of the major things down there like we said a couple of months ago we announced that we were fixing a, a good block of streets um, down this way and so we can take on a whole nother set of streets that we haven't been able to um because we because we're having to wait for the next fiscal year well in this if we incrementally go down and we go again with the 10 million bond uh cash then we can uh or uh, uh co bond or co geo whatever it is um if we do that, then we can take off a whole nother long list of projects that have been long overdue. Um, put up sidewalks, um, look at drainage stuff. Um, and, 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 and I understand your concern. Um, I was basing the tax rate based off of the, uh, the, the order of projects of what, how we wanted to do them. That was it. Okay. Other comments? I have a question, Lydia. Does the, um, if the community had any comments about this, would they contact you directly or would that have been directed to someone else? About the city questions about about the tax rate or yeah the they could have contacted me yes okay has anyone done that no. within the time frame okay. no sorry one more yeah <laughs> if by chance if the tax rate they the same as it currently is for this past um fiscal year then that's something that would go to election because it's going above what the amount is now. I just learned. Yes. Okay. Only because this is what has been submitted to. Um, I was obligated to go ahead and submit this the first Saturday in August, and I certified this amount. We do have time if we decide to go ahead and go above this to call the election. We certainly have time. We'd have probably have to do a, a special session. Uh, to call for the election. Do we no longer have time to do what we did last year? Not without a, not without a special. Um, we didn't do a special election last year. Um, a special meeting. A special meeting. Uh, council members, it's up to you all. I, I've said my piece in regard to that. Um, uh, we we just have a lot of stuff to do. And dropping down uh, too much um, puts things off. And we have a lot of projects that need to be done. We have a lot of projects that need to be done, haven't been done for a long time. So um, And I'm thinking uh, Mayor Council to the whole budgeting process and how we got to we were 2.1 million out of balance. And so we we took every option that we had 
to bring you a balanced budget. And that was the key with uh, uh, cutting positions and cutting programs. And in the midst of looking at trying to give you a balanced budget, if we were to keep the levy tax rate at 0.7273, we'd, need, we'd have to go back and find an additional million dollars in cuts on the O&M side. And if we issued the debt, so that was something we wanted to make sure we looked at as far as issuing debt, we could do so. But we also want to know that's going to be an impact on the O&M where we may have to have an offset to where we're going to have to reduce something on the O&M side to go up. So we wanted to make sure we took that into account just to give you a balanced budget. And as you're saying, Mayor, we, we went through Yeoman's work last year to kind of keep it where it's at the 074 but coming this year, we, we looked at the same things. How can we just make sure we, knowing that we've got, you know, propositions that we want to put on the, before the voters, is to show them, like I said, our roadmap to say, this is how we're going to balance the budget going forward. And and we were um, just trying to make sure we um, kept the citizens in mind with, with that going forward, because we know we're going to ask for them to, to vote um, here in November and then be able to say we can balance the budget without cutting O&M right now. Because if we add people, more likely we have to reduce people. Uh, you know, so we wanted to make sure we was this, we did right by by the programs we have in place now and anything else we wanted to add, that we were to fund those those additional initiatives. And in this case, dropping it down and then being able to look forward is that going forward over the next 10 years or 15 years, at the rate of growth that we have, we still be able to stay within um, that 0.7273 or 0.67. So we don't know that until we get to next year. So if we were to issue anything now, um, that's something we just have to keep in mind is that we have to come back and just make sure, because right now we just don't want to overestimate our revenues and then maybe hit uh, inflation or recession. And then we have to come back and really look at that because we said uh, we are close to having something that's going to require us to really take a look at that part of um, the financial situation we're in as a country. But when if we went, if we dropped the rate down, so last year we did, we did 1.78 down to 7.74. If we drop 7, then we do have inflation and, those, and that kind of thing. Um, uh, wouldn't that lead down to that whole path of um, people not being able to do this and do that and collection of property taxes? possibly going down and we got a lower rate. So wouldn't that potentially hurt us more? I, I think as far as collections, I, I think we're we're pretty good. Like I said, we just don't know. Because some, some things could turn for people, medical, like you said, things could happen. So we don't, we just, on the conservative side, we just didn't want to take a chance to where um, the rate stays at 7 to, I think that would have been a $240 impact versus the $41 impact, which is equivalent to about $3.40, $3.60 per month. And and when you look at the difference, you're looking at about a $21, $22 a month difference. Again, that seems like a lot to some, but when they look at their tax bill, they automatically say, well, the city went up on my taxes when we can, again, those calls, like Council Member Hill would have said, we would have explained it to a resident by looking at the tax bill with them. Again, we don't know that until October when we'd be able to have that conversation with a, a citizen to say we stay within or we dropped. So that way, going into November, we can still be able to um, you know, point that fact out to them that we, we stay within um, you know, within the, the rate of the, the, the guideline we got from the council to say we want to we want to do things, but we want to make sure we do it without having a substantial increase. And again, as Mayor said, if we want to, Look at that. You see some projects we have to identify um, to be able to come back and say, if we want the 0 0.72, we have to look at that impact on the O and M and be able to find those offsets to, to make sure we still keep a balanced budget for these efforts to approve. Okay. Other comments, questions? Take comments, questions, or motions. Somewhere in there isn't is there not a happy medium in between the two? Point six seven eight nine is the highest that we can go without an election. 
Mayor and Council, just a reminder, the, the last day to call the special election, it's September 21st. That's Monday. August 21st? Yes. Yes. You said September. Oh, I'm sorry. August 21st. Monday. Take a motion uh, to close the public hearing or no, no more questions or comments. And also just to give a little bit of the historical of the tax collection rate. Uh, the year of COVID, we had 100% collection. In 21, we had 101 collection. Uh, in 22, uh, we received 100% collection. And as of 2023, um, uh, it's also anticipated at 100% collection. Mayor Council, I would like to make a motion that we close the public hearing. We have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman here. Is there a second? A second. Second by Councilwoman Mesquite. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. We're running on number two, conduct a public hearing on ordinance amending Shadow Glen Planning Unit Development, PUD, and being located at intersections of Lexington Street and U.S. Highway 290, as well as Shadow Glen Boulevard and U.S. Highway 290 Lane in Texas. And I don't see Mr. Dunlap. Evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so this item, uh, we're actually requesting, asking if um, the council could open the public hearing and then postpone it to um, your next meeting. It's September 6th. Uh, we got some additional information regarding the plan. And so we're just kind of doing a little gathering, talking to the developers, and making sure we get all the information for you. So. We have a motion on the floor. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we leave open public hearing for item number two and postpone it until September 6th. We have a motion on board by Councilman Moreno. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman uh, Weir. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item number three, conduct a public hearing on ordinance rezoning two lots on 0.297 acres more or less at 108 West Boyd Street, 104 West Boyd Street, Lane of Texas, from single family SF1 through downtown business. Uh, Mr. Robert. Uh, thank you, sir. My name is Robert Battle. Uh, this is where the ridiculousness of the comprehensive plan really starts to come into play. According to this uh, comprehensive plan, you guys seem to think that we want high density multi use down there. The only person that wants that is Scott Dunlop and a few of these developers. This particular developer is called Build Block. They are a $250 million real estate investment company. The average investor is a Korean that invests $20,000. They're using the shopping center across the way to justify that we're having all this great growth. We don't want that growth there. Are you able to pull up the dashboard? Yuvia? It's not your meeting, sir. Pardon me? You're addressing council. Oh, this is not my meeting. Thank you for sharing that with me. Okay, um, this is a public hearing, though. I'm trying to get some answers. Will I be able to get but, some answers? But it's still our meeting, and you're, you're sharing your public comments about the, the development. So please stay focused and talk to I was trying to look at something about the development. My God. Okay, and here's another goofball thing. We're wanting to give $15 million to a development fund, so I'd like to know exactly how much incentive is Mr. Jones going to give these people? Why are we paying people that are worth $250 million to destroy our own neighborhood? This is the encroachment that's ruining Old Manor. Old Manor, excuse me. Also in here, they talk about their, we can't see their site plan, I guess. Um, 
Can I ask if we can see the site plan? Am I allowed to do that? I think the site plan is already. Pardon me? The site plan is already made available for everybody online. I would like to see it right now. Uh, is there one that shows the parking places and things? We don't get to see the parking places in this site plan. Your time has passed, but I'll let you ask your question related to the site plan. What is it specifically you want to ask me? They say there is street parking somewhere. I'd like to see where the street parking is supposedly. They got like 36 parking places and then they want to use more street parking. I don't know where it's going to be. Where's it going to be? On um, uh, Boyce, Caldwell Street, and, and the Rip um, is where it's. Have you ever tried to park there? Okay. Uh, so it's on boys. Okay, my question, the other question then, please, was how much incentives are we planning to give these rich people? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, well, he, he brought that up at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay, thank we you. got your question. We'll get it for you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunlap, can you explain the process we're in right now so there can be some clarification? Sure, this is just the zoning request, so determining if the use is appropriate for the area. Um, for the action item, um, Planning Commission did postpone it because they wanted uh, some architectural renderings. So the site plan, a conceptual one was provided. Um, the parking does need to get worked on. It's not to code to perfect, but um, they did give a, a general overview of just sort of a building placed on the property and some conceptual parking, which is the next slide. But um, yeah, so they're just requesting downtown business zoning, which is mixed zoning. And so conceptually, they're looking for um, office retail, first floor. They don't have tenants or anything like that known. Um, it's just creating the spaces, tenant lease spaces, and then uh, some residential units above. How does, that, how does this line up with our land use map for that area? Uh, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. This area is um, on the future land use map as um downtown business essentially um and so it aligns with um all of the comprehensive plan in terms of what the activity is downtown and the mixed use downtown and uh sort of increasing densities around the potential future green line transit stop okay questions com uh, comments council I have one. Um, mm -hmm. Did any of the people who were in the neighboring area, did they have any comments or concerns or reach out to you about this development? No, not that I'm aware of. Originally, too, sorry for some recent history on it. Um, this did come before you all before when it was just the corner lot. Um, and it was recommended for denial by Planning Commission because they were concerned there's a house in between. So, um, Eric Davis property that's under construction right now on Lexington. Um, this is behind that on Boyce. Um, and so there's one house in between and there was concerns about um, setbacks and kind of adjacency to that use. Um, and so this developer, this owner, um, reached out to them and was able to purchase their property. Um, not sure what they paid for, but they were able to close on that. Um, and so that satisfied the planning conditions initial concerns regarding um you know adjacency to a single family home um but this was one was they just wanted a little better renderings um and the developer said they can provide those so are we postponing this one uh not the public hearing i mean you're welcome to keep it open again until the next meeting but um the action from or the recommendation from planning commission was a postponement so they haven't taken an action on it uh, it'll come back to them at their September 13th meeting. Is this the one where the uh, developer said that the uh, apartments above were going to be for their employees? For the one across the street, they mentioned that, that some of the units could be for employees for the businesses downstairs because a portion of the office they wanted to have some of their office in. And so I think they would made, maybe would make available the units above for those employees. But that's not, wasn't discussed on this project. That was a 
questions? Um, Scott, did um, planning and zoning have any other things that they wanted other than the rendering? No. A rendering standard for uh, zoning requests? Uh, they're becoming more, more typical, especially in the downtown area. Uh, they kind of want to see um, the type of structure that's going to be built. Um, I mean, downtown business, I mean, the maximum height is 60 feet. I mean, that's not what's planned here. Um, so there is some caveats when someone shows you a, a rendering because you know, they can show you a code compliant rendering and then modify it when they actually go to build it because it's just a zoning case. You're really just approving the, the entitlement, the, the use of the property, not what it looks like. But uh, the planning commission does like to understand, have a better picture literally of what, what they're wanting to do. Okay, council, so you, you all have a choice in how you make your motion. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we open the public hearing on item number three and postpone it until this uh, September 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, motion on floor by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. All right, move on on item number four, public hearing. Uh, on an ordinance rezoning one lot on 1.32, uh, excuse me, 0. 0.132 acres more or less being located at 209 West uh, uh Maynard, Texas, from single family SF1 to neighborhood business. Um, Mr. Robert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Robert Battle. I would just like to remind the group that Mr. Dunlop was not at the last planning and zoning meeting. You guys really need to figure out a way to talk to and from your committees and commissions. That would be most helpful. Okay, now this, uh, I hate to ever hear you guys use this word downtown. We don't have a downtown. The phrase downtown became something in the 1950s and it was about New York City. Downtown means a central business district. Just because people have been calling this three little blocks of Parsons Street downtown doesn't mean it's a downtown. We need to stop using that word, please, everybody. It confuses all these planners. They think, let's build it up, let's build it up. So I wanna say about this guy here, Mr. Chavez, He's going to neighborhood business, and that, I say, hip, hip, hooray. This proves to me that he can make a business without needing 55 parking places. And yes, those guys did want to live above there on the last one, but he's going to make his business work with a neighborhood zoning, and that has worked fine. That's what old manor should be. We have history. Quaint history is what we want. That's what's going to sell down here for tourism and for quality of life and history. That's what Manor has. But we don't have history if we destroy the barber shop and put a big box and we put these other things there. So neighborhood zoning is what we want. We don't want anything that says the word downtown on Parson Street, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dunham, we notified all the residents um, that live around the property? Yes. Uh, was there any opposition to the zoning request? No. Thank you. And see, yes, this is a, a request for a neighborhood business. Um, the property owner, they want to um, convert it to a hair salon. Um, and this also, too, was originally before you all um, some time ago, but it was under, they requested C1, like commercial at that time. Uh, and that was denied based on parking concerns. Um, so this property, I mean, parking space on the size of the structure 
and the existing house is 900 square feet. Uh, and so for personal services use, that only requires five parking spaces so they can accommodate that on their property um, fairly easily. Um, but yes, they want to use the existing structure for a, a hair salon or personal services use. And it's uh, consistent with the future land use map. It's sort of right on the cusp of where the downtown mixed use transitions to neighborhood mixed use. And with it being a hair salon, is the drainage good there for that? Is it going to be anything affecting the drainage? Uh, I mean, they'll be adding some impervious cover, so they'll have to determine how that flows on the property. That'll be like an administrative process through their site plan with their engineer and our engineer. Um, so they'll, they're not supposed to release water off their property in a faster or higher concentration than pre-development. So they may have to grade their property in a certain way that when it enters the bar ditches and the drainage further south, um, that it doesn't negatively impact those. Thank you. Other questions, comments? We do have a number of hair places mm -hmm. in Maynard. How close is that to the one that's right there on um, Bastrop and Parson? Uh, yeah, that's just a block or two away. So, but we don't necessarily regulate the specific use like that. They just fall under any of the permitted uses of neighborhood business and a hair salon would fall under personal services. So as a small business, they can, okay, they see the market you. for it. So. Um, does this have to, if it goes into neighborhood business, does it need to, when it makes the updates to, I guess, to meet that code, is there an additional um, level of meeting the ordinances and standards once they get to that space? Because they have to, well, as a single family, then it's one thing. Or, and I'm just, I guess I'm only talking about the structure itself. Mm -hmm. and, Yes. Yeah. Once it becomes a public accessible structure, they have to have an ADA bathroom and they may have to have a ramp on it. Um, if there's stairs, there has to be an accessible access. And so that'll be part of their building permit plan review before they have a certificate of occupancy. I think of like even the electricity and the water, waste water. That may also, um, I believe once you remodel a structure beyond 50, over $50,000, um, based on building code, you have to bring all of the um, like electrical, plumbing, mechanical up to code. So if this structure isn't, then they may have some additional code work they have to do. Other questions? I'll take more questions or more questions or a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing on item four. A motion by Councilwoman Wynn to close the public hearing. Is there a second? A second. Second by Councilwoman uh, Musquay. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes now. We're right along. Um, we're going to actually pull item number five and go down to item number. Six. Conduct a public hearing on a short form uh, final plat for one lot on 0.23 acres, more or less, being located at 707 Bastrop Street, Maynard, Texas, with variance to allow for a 40 foot lot with 20 foot front setback, five foot step back, side setbacks, and 10 foot uh, rear setback with a depth to uh, width ratio of 6.25 uh, to 1. Um, Mr. Robert. Uh, is this item 5 or 6? Six? 6. What happened to 5? 
we just pulled it. Pardon me? We pulled it. Oh, you pulled it. And I'm sorry, I must have missed that announcement. <clears throat> okay, so let me talk about uh, number six, if I may, if you're able to bring that other map up um, with the aerial view number seven, I guess it is. This will work good here. Now, the interesting thing about this is that every one of these little alleyways, and this is just a little segment of Old Manor. On the far right there at the top is the Martin McVeigh Cemetery. On the far right, the post office is just above there. You want 95 townhomes over there. But see all these alleys? Those basically have been abandoned by Manor. And I want to give all those alleys back to the property owners and basically create the property line in the center of the alleys. And I don't want to charge, I don't want people to incur more taxes. So we want to do this by adjusting the easements. I had this problem when I wanted to back up to my edge of my alley with my storage building about five years ago because it's abandoned property. There's an electric pole there. The people of Old Manor have been mowing these yards for like 50 years. The city doesn't do it. To me, that means they've been abandoned. And I think we should do this as a land rush and as give back for all the 50 years of never doing anything for our roads. Let's give everybody another five to 10 feet of backyard everywhere in here. And so this I do, I'm in favor of doing some variances but this neighborhood here, and this needs to be a tiny home neighborhood. Tiny homes are the most hip happening thing right now. And that's what we should put in here. Tiny homes, historic looking tiny homes. And this will be a happening. I call this neighborhood West Lexington. Since I'm the mayor of Old Manor, I can name the neighborhoods. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunlop. Can you provide clarification on what this is all about? Sure. So this um, this lot was created. We have a deed from the 80s. Uh, the owner has some references back from the 50s, but we have something from the 80s. Um, so this lot has been in existence for 40 years. Um, it's the back 40 feet of five other lots. Um, and so really only the first lot on uh, North Bastrop fronts on a public right of way. The other lots that are 40 feet by 50 feet, don't have any uh, frontage on a public right away. Um, and so the lot is essentially undevelopable. Um, the owner can't construct anything unless they have significant variances to our codes. Um, and so what this is um, looking to do is create this lot, this 40 by 250 lot um, with some lesser variances, just the lot width, the lot depth, and then to the setbacks. Um, to create a developable lot in which a code compliant building could be constructed without additional variances. Um, it is zoned SF1 now. The, the previous case I was pulled was a reason to two family, but um, they're looking now just to construct a single family home, uh, which is possible on a 40 foot wide lot. Um, Stonewater is all 40 foot lots. Village of Manor Commons is 40, Shadowland is 40s. It's a common enough lot size, so it's feasible. Um, to construct a home there, um, but it's these variances are necessary. And, and sorry, you're seeing this plat because of the variances. Typically, subdivision plats wouldn't come before you, but um, because of the variance request, uh, it requires your approval. Um, and when you get to the action, the planning commission did deny it. Um, they were concerned about setting a precedent. And then also the remaining five lots, which are under common ownership as well, um, those lots would be 50 by 75 feet. And so a person there who wanted to develop them would also need some variances. And so they kind of didn't want to create a you know, burden on someone else, but um, there's sort of a, a substantial hardship on this case since without the variances on this property, they can't develop it at all. Um, there's really not much remedy other than this property or purchasing the adjacent property, which they've tried to do, but they said it was uh, priced beyond their abilities and an unreasonable amount, or for the other property owner to purchase this lot, which they may not be seeking to do either. So um, it's a it's a substantial hardship. Um, yes, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. 
Any questions? questions I'll take the motion mayor council I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing on item number six we have a motion on floor by councilman Wallace is there a second I second second by council member right now any questions to the motion I have a question mm -hmm. yes, uh, did planning and zoning did they disapprove the public hearing closing or is that just for what was presented to them? Their action item. They conducted the public hearing and did that and closed it. And then when they were on their action item, which is later on your agenda tonight, uh, they recommended denial. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Any other questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passed. Number seven, conduct a public hearing on the subdivision short form final plan for the Los Estrados North subdivision two lots on 0.769 uh, acres more or less and located at 1331, 13301 East uh, Highway 290 uh, East. Uh, Maynard, Texas, then being filed with a variance from Maynard Code of Ordinance, Chapter 10, Exhibit A, Article 3, Section 45, 6, and 7, relating to a lot shape. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Dunlop. Sure. So this is another plot with a variance. That's best before you all, instead of just that planning commission. Um, this one is right at the corner of Greg Maynard and 290. So there's a, um, like a car loan place there, the one at the red roof. So that part, that's one of these lots. Um, the prior Alnor Muslim Center was there. Um, and so they're looking to plat two of the lots. So they have three lots. There's one right at the corner and then that's already platted. And then they're creating these two other lots um, to create two pad sites for future development. Um, well, one, there's existing uh, car loan place on one and then a, another property that they're looking to have a retailer come on. Um, but there's a 30 foot wide uh, easement that goes to the property. So the water line that goes up to the Shadow Glen water tower and um, supplies that mud as well as presidential meadows goes through this property. Um, and so it sort of created an angle to all the lots. Um, and so just due to the, the lot shape and the extreme angle, um, they needed to request the variance for that. Um, and so, and uh, PNZ did approve this one when they got to their action item. Questions? Scott, is it only the only variance that I see is the shape? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. Other questions? I take questions on a motion. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for item number seven. I have a motion on floor by Council Member Rango. Is there a second? I second. A second by Council Member Wallace. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Number eight, conduct a public hearing on a specific permit, uh, specific use permit for a medical uh, clinic located at Southwest corner of U.S. Highway 290 and Greg Maynard uh, Road, Maynard, Texas. Mr. Dunlop. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the applicant has filed to do a medical clinic, so a 24-hour emergency center. Um, if you remember, like, the former CVS property across from uh, Riata, uh, right near where that previous plot just was, uh, it's on that property. Um, and so they're looking, their, their conceptual plan that they provided had a, a 10,800 square foot um, clinic or uh, emergency center, and then a 990 square foot uh, EMS facility, because they're looking to partner with Chavez County EMS to 
give them a home because I believe right now they're stationed at the Grass Hill Apartments. Um, Council, um, you may or may not remember, um, we've had conversations. We talked about the arrival times for EMS. Um, definitely think we talked about in public safety um, because they don't have a home out here. So uh, city staff is more, and don't have no, others have had conversation um, with the uh, uh, entity looking to do this project and uh, Travis County uh, folks to uh, try to figure out how to make this opportunity happen where our EMS can be local so they don't have to commute all the way from Austin uh, to save uh, lives. So um, that's kind of the reason why you see uh, the piece with the uh, Travis County EMS facility. So they have, a place, they have to have a place to, uh, to reside and currently their home, I think, is um, uh, because the SD12 is growing, they don't have space to house it in. So we don't want them to be permanently out of a home. So we, we've talked to our to some partners and this was a solution that they came up with. Questions? So you wouldn't access it from 290, you'd access it from Greg Lane? Yes, so they're using existing streets. So uh, Greg Lane or Threshold, which is the, the smaller street that's right next to um, AutoZone. Yeah. Other questions? Did any of the surrounding businesses have any input on this uh, in the they, 24 hour. <laughs> <laughs> they were notified, but there was no comments received. Yeah, it's just, uh, what, AutoZone and we're not a port? Yes. Other questions? Other questions, comments? Being none, is there a motion? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing on item number eight. We have a motion on the floor by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, consent agenda. All the items on the consent agenda considered to be self-explanatory by council will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion on the items requested by the, unless requested by the mayor or council member, in which, excuse me, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separate. Number nine, consideration discussion, possible action on approval of city council minutes. Uh, Ten, consideration discussion, possible action on accepting July 2023 departmental reports. Uh, number 11, consideration discussion and then possible action on a joint agreement with Travis County for the no November 7, 2023 special election. Number 12, second final reading consideration discussion on possible action on a preliminary plan unit development plan site plan for OPRA uh, track development 331 lots on 113.4 acres more or less and located at 14418 North FM 970 in Maynard, Texas. Any, is there a motion on the floor or a request for, for item to be pulled? Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. We have a motion by Councilwoman Mesqua to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Weir. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Number 14, consideration, discussion, possible action on proposed bond propositions. Mr. Moore. Your Council, we, um, Greg, with the bring this item before you, Greg was going to fill in, but just want to kind of set the back up. Before you saw it was this was left blank, and we had a couple of meetings where we identified uh, propositions and, and the estimated cost, and the item before you is to identify each proposition and the dollar amounts that was needed to to bring this item for your, 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 your 
support. Yes, sir. I'm uh, primarily up here to answer any questions or address any any thoughts or concerns uh, with the proposition language. Um, and if I could, I would like to request that um, Proposition C, which is at page four of the ordinance, um, that we insert the word new right before City Hall. If y'all don't have an objection to that. I don't. Any counseling? Okay. Okay. No objection. Okay. Thank you. Um, we drafted these propositions um, to try and capture, I'm sorry, this, I don't know how loud this is. Uh, we wanted to capture each of the council members, uh, different aspects of each proposition as, as they came up over the last several months. And working with Mr. Moore, I believe that we've captured every specific project um, that has been brought up um, here at City Council in one form or fashion. Um, proposition A um, relates to the overall economic development projects. Um, it calls for up to $15 million in bonds, and this would fund acquisition of property, um, making of grants and loans to commercial entities, um, and also making improvements to utilities and streets that are directly related to economic development projects. Proposition B relates to a new recreation center and related parks and recreation improvements. Um, I, I believe we caught everything in there. Um, it covers the gamut of parks and recreation from trails, um, park improvements, ancillary facilities, a ballpark um, with also ancillary facilities. I'm thinking like concession stands and stuff like that. Basically everything that you would need to have a successful parks and recreation department is included in this. Um, that one of course is for $61,695,000. Proposition C concerns a combined facility that will serve as a city hall and public library. Um, and that is for $90,105,000. It covers acquisition of land, design, planning, all the way up through the completion of construction. And we also added uh, maintaining, uh, and as we did in Proposition B, um, just so to the extent that there are funds remaining after construction, um, there will be funds accessible for maintaining that, that facility. Thanks for going through those. Um, as a reminder to council and, and guests, um, this is uh, um, these are summaries of what we've had from survey data, um, driven back as far as 15 years uh, from residential requests, uh, rec center and uh, public library uh, meet and space for public have been the top request of our residents. Um, for, for many years. And so we spent a lot of time, um, years working to get to this point. And to think of our uh, big thanks to our city staff, uh, finance director, uh, Ms. Collins, um, Bob folks, Chris and all of those folks who are coming together and crushing it out with us so that we can actually get to this point to where we can bring um, some opportunities uh, for the residents to participate in and bring in public facilities to, uh, to the city. Um, I will say that uh, one of our goals is to ensure that we um, do acquire the land and, and the things we need in the future because uh, land is going fast. And um, just the things, just some uh, things we would like to see in our city um, down the line, but if, if we don't move quickly and we allow for people, for landowners to sell to only residential developers or only to commercial entities, then we won't have the space to do the um, public facilities that we want to do. So it's, an, it's imperative for us right now to um, take control of our future and get the things that we need now. Um, and with the plan of where we want to be at when we build at 100,000, so that uh, we're not at 100,000 wishing that uh, we had made decisions in uh, 2023. So um, again, thank you all for your hard work. Uh, this quick summary of where we were at and where, um, how we got to this place.
Any other comments or questions, council members? Can I make one more comment? Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, we've already been through this, but assuming that on the next item you do approve these, um, once the election is ordered, um, all, the, all the principles that we discussed that apply to elected officials um, with regards to discussing the Take bond vote. will apply. Um, and just so you know, as your bond council, we're here to any publications or anything like that, communications you want to do, we're here to review those. Um, we're not here to slow you down. We can we can turn those around very quickly, um, but we just want to make sure that everybody is proceeding appropriately, um, which I know you all will because um, your intention is good, um, but we're here as, as a resource for you, and we'll be working closely with the PR firm, I'm sure, um, to make sure all the communications uh, fit fit the need. Um, so the, the, when, when we go to the... the it, your, it starts now, yeah. Yeah, on your own time, on your own dime. Yep. Um, although, other than that, yep. only the approved messaging um, goes out. Yeah, and, and I, th I think the one thing I wanted to mention, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Man. Okay, the one thing I did want to mention, too, is if, if we stick with objective facts and stay away from, even though we all have a vision of what the purpose of these proceeds are and what we want it to do, um, we need to work on making sure that it's all framed as objective facts. What do we know about about this? Um, how do we describe in objective terms what this is going to do? Um, so let's just wanted to mention that. Um, Thank you. I think that's going to be the language that comes to us from um, those partners that we work have our work with to make sure yeah. it does want to be a, uh, objective. So. Other questions, comments, council members? I'll take a motion if there's no other questions or comments. No, sorry, one more. If we could actually approve this, is this the item where we're voting on, where you're voting on it? I'm asking for a motion. Okay. I just want to mention if somebody could please add the word new in Proposition C. Do you want new as well in? Recreation center. Um, with recreation oh, center, B. Um, we have it in for new recreation center. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so ordinance language. Um, yeah, page four, and that's where I wanted to add it. It's it's in the um, so-called proposition language, at page two and three. Those are very clear that it's a new. Those are new facilities. It's just in the ballot language at, at page four um, that I wanted to add the term new. Um, so it would read issuance of 90 million 105 of city of Maynard, Texas general obligation bonds for a new city hall slash public library. Okay. Yep. Take questions or a motion. All right. Uh, let's see. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that. City Council approve ordinance number 715. No. 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 This is item number. Yeah, we're still on we're item. Still number 13. 13. You're just approving the propositions. Mayor Council, I'd like, like to, to make, make a motion yeah. that we approve the proposed bond propositions A through C as proposed with the amendment on ballot language B to add the word new to City Hall and Recreation Center. Proposition C. Proposition, Proposition C. So I have a motion by Councilman Moran. Was there a second? A second. Second by uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Do you have any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, number 14. Consideration discussion possible action on ordinance calling a special bond election for November 7, 2023, make provisions for conduct conducting the election and ordering the other matters incident and related to such election. Mayor and Council, on this one on the motion, you can also amend um, the Proposition C to add the word new. Is that a motion number four? Mayor Council, I'd like to make the motion that we approve ordinance number 715, calling ball and election for November 7th, 2023, making provisions for the conduct for conducting the election and ordering other matters 
incident and related to such elections and amending proposition C to adding the word new. We have a motion by the floor by Council Member Moran. Is there a second? I second. Second by Mayor Pro Tam Ember Hill. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, item number 15 consideration discussion possible action on the resolution approving the uh, acquisition of accessible voting system in compliance with state and federal laws uh, through a service agreement with Travis County. <laughs> Okay, this just uh, puts you as the chief election officer and all that good stuff on number 15. Yes, it's a standard um, stand, a standard service agreement with Travis County. We just had to approve the, uh, the resolution after the election was called. Okay. So and they're actually, um, we have to approve the voting, the new voting system they're putting in place and that is needed by action. Second. Travis County is having a new uh, voting system. So each entity has, the council has to approve it by resolution. Oh, and, yeah. yes. Is that a motion? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 2023 30. Approving the acquisition of an accessible voting system in compliance with the state and federal laws through a service agreement with Travis County and authorize the mayor to execute the election agreement. We have a motion on the floor by Council uh, Member Moreno. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Wallace. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Number 16, consideration discussion possible action on ordinance levying um, at lowering taxes uh, for the use of and uh, support of uh, municipal government of Maine, Texas for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2023, and being September 30th, 2024. Um, this is connected to the public hearing that took place. And is there any more discussion or questions related to this? Any uh, questions about to this? Go yes. ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the caring part, and I guess it's just asking for clarification because I may have wrote it down on. Is it um, with the decrease amount, how many cents is it over a year? It was like 41, 42. Is that, that's the amount that it would be for um, over the span of a year? I think you said that but I didn't. So for the operation and maintenance in the, during the workshop, the form, there was a, a draft form of the bond issuance and how it would affect uh, the tax, the tax rate and how it would affect our operation and maintenance. And Chris Lane had put in and worked in a 5% um, growth for each year on the operation and maintenance. Questions? Questions or a motion? Second. 
So like Councilwoman Hill, I just want to be clear, they, you had mentioned a, a $41.22. Was that for the year for the house value of some, could you clarify that again for us? Correct. For a house value of $273,022, they would see an increase, a yearly increase of $41.22. Thank you. Yes. Was that it? Okay. Another question? Motion? I have a question slash possible motion. Is it possible to to postpone this motion until the end of the meeting so I have more time to think about it? Can I like move it, move the agenda item down and what? then come back in? You I'm sorry. Ask. You can it, it's my son's birthday and I'm trying to get to his dinner. <laughs> but I'm open to all answer any and all questions. Well, we can move not... the agenda item and bring it back, right? Sorry about your son's birthday. <laughs> Mayor and City Council members, Veronica Rivera, Assistant City Attorney. Um, yes, you can make a motion to table the item and until the end of the meeting or until the last agenda item, which, whichever you'd like to make. And then you can, if there's a second and there's a, and the motion passes, then you can table it to later in the meeting. Would our finance director be required to stay for questions? If you have additional, if you think you're going to have additional questions, then you will have, you would have your finance director here. Okay. Take questions or motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 716 for fiscal year 2023-2024 for a proposed tax rate. And I move that the property tax rate be decreased by the adoption of the tax rate of 0 0.67 eight nine on each hundred dollar valuation of property which is effectively a 10.03 decrease in the tax rate we have a motion on floor by councilwoman that's why is there a second i second second by councilwoman weir is there any questions to the motion is there any questions to the motion no questions to the motion? Being that, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes four to three. Moving on to let's see. 17 first uh, reading consideration discussion possible action on ordinance. Amending shot exam, public uh, plans unit development put and being located at intersections Lexington Street and US Highway 290, as well as shot exam Boulevard and US Highway 290 Ray in Texas. Yes, sir. True. So, this item, the public hearing was postponed to September 6th, so we would just be requesting postponement the action item to September 6th as well. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone item number 17 to the September 6th meeting. We have a motion on floor by Councilwoman Vesperas. Is, is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, number 18, first reading consideration discussion, possible action on the ordinance rezoning. Two lots on point two nine seven acres more or less at 108 West Boyce 
at 104 West Boyd Street, Miami, Texas, from single family SF1 to downtown business DBZ. This post, um, this item was also postponed to the September 20th meeting since Planning Commission postponed it at theirs to receive some more information. So we, uh, you could take the action to postpone, to continue postponing to uh, September 20th. Is there a motion on the floor? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone item number 18 to the September 20th, 2023 meeting. So a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Wallace. Is there a second? A uh, second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. 19, first reading consideration discussion on possible, possible action on ordinance rezoning one lot on point one three two acres more or less and being located at 209 North Lexington Street, Miami, Texas, from being uh, from single family as a suburban SF1 to neighborhood business, uh, neighborhood business. Thank you. Sure. So this is the, the small house just next door here that uh, they're looking to do the hair salon on. Um, so neighborhood business would permit that. Um, so if approved, they would file a site plan to improve the property and then any necessary building permits to receive a certificate of occupancy. Um, Planning Commission did approve this um, six to zero. Is there a motion on the floor? No questions? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the first reading of an ordinance rezoning lot on 0 0.132 acres, more or less, and being located at 209 North Lexington Street, Maynard, Texas, from single family suburban SF1 to neighborhood business and B. We have a motion on the floor by Councilman Moran. Is there a second? I second. Second by uh, Councilwoman Mesquite. Is there any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Number 20, it goes on to item five that was pulled. Twenty one consideration discussion possible action on a short form final plat for one lot on point two three acres more or less being located at seven oh seven Bastrop Street, Maynard, Texas, uh, with variances to allow for forty feet, forty foot lot with twenty foot um, uh, front setback and five foot side setbacks and ten foot rear setback with a depth to width uh, ratio of six point two five one. So this is the plat on Bastrop where it was, uh, right now it's five lots that are 40 feet by 50 feet. Um, and it's, uh, they're undevelopable uh, in their current state. Um, so the applicant has requested to combine them into one lot that's 40 by 250, um, which is narrower than lot requirements. SF1 is 70 feet. Um, and then it's, it's longer than code requirements. So normally about two, two and a half to one uh, in depth, and this is a six and a quarter um, because it's 40 by 250, but um, that's just the length of the block. Uh, and then the narrowness, um, the standard setback on SF1 is seven and a half feet on the sides. Um, so that would lose them 15 feet. And so they were looking to go down to five, which is standard. We have a, our zoning SF2 has five foot setbacks. Um, a lot of the subdivisions actually have five foot setbacks. Um, so it is a common amount. Um, and Planning Commission also, um, as part of their purview, they do setback waivers. Um, and so normally on other lots, we do them all the time. Pretty much anything that gets built here in town, um, Planning Commission will do a setback waiver to do five foot setbacks. So that's a very common request, but with this being a plat, it's part of the plat process, not do a setback waiver. Um, but staff is recommending approval um, due to the, the hardship that would be imposed if it wasn't approved. Um, they couldn't develop it. Their only recourse would be to sell to the adjacent property or the adjacent property would have to buy theirs, uh, which is a pretty substantial hardship. Um, uh, Planning Commission did deny it. Again, they were concerned about a precedent that being set, but this is a very unusual circumstance. Um, this property has been existing for 40 years, maybe even back to the 50s. We just had the deed that went back to the 80s. Um, <clears throat> um, and so, yeah, they were concerned about setting a precedent and then what it may impose on the other properties, um, which 
the other property when they develop, they may need variances, but they'd have to determine that at the time. And um, those would also be supported. I mean, this is, a, again, an unusual circumstance that uh, other properties really couldn't claim. Someone couldn't come in and create this lot now. Um, you know, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be approved. So just by approving this lot doesn't mean going forward other people could do it. Um, it's just sort of a circumstance that we've had for at least 40 years, maybe longer. Um, and again, it's, it's undevelopable without the, the variance. Um, but with planning commission's denial, it does require a super majority. So it does require five affirmative votes to be approved. All right, council. Questions or a motion? Scott, is this the one where they were looking to put the duplexes? Yes, originally, and then that was the application that was just withdrawn before this. Um, they're just going to focus on doing a single family home at this time. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the short form final plat for one lot on 0.23 acres, more or less, and being located at 707. Wait, am I in the right one? Yeah. Okay. Bastrop Street, Manor, Texas, with variances to allow for 40 foot lot width, 20 foot front setback, 5 foot side setbacks, and 10 foot rear setbacks in the depth to width ratio of 6.25 to 1. That was a motion on the floor by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? Is there a second? We have a motion on the floor by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? Remind Council if there's no second, if the floor is silence, the, mo the motion dies. <laughs> Okay, uh, motion, motion dies. Is there another motion on the floor? Is there some discussion we need to have? I would like to make a motion that City Council do not approve the short form plot for um, one on point two three acres more or less and being located at 707 Bastrop Street, Manor, Texas with variances for 40 foot lot um, with 20 foot setback and five um, foot set side setbacks and 10 foot rear setbacks and a depth to width ratio of 6.25 raised to one. We have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman uh, Hill. Is there a second? A second. I second. Good. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Hill. Any questions to the motion? Is the reason for denial because of the planning and zoning? I was looking at the, um, well, I did have a question that would have went with that. And I guess I was just wondering if there were any other um, homes, single family homes that would be similar to that, that we already have in our area or something that would be similar, I guess in the coming space, cause it would, it would be different, like the bread, I mean, I guess with lot, lot size with, and I'm only looking and I, and I guess the only other reason because since I don't have the, the single family, looking of it to assume so i'm only looking at what it was before and just imagining it as a split in half one person mm -hmm. you know what so I mean? there are a lot of 40 foot wide lots already in the city this would be a larger lot than those like i said village Manor commons bell farms has 40s shadow glen all of stonewater 
Um, and this property would be bigger than those because it's those lots are like 40 by 120, 125, 130. And this is 40 by 250. So it's actually substantially larger than um, what you get in the subdivisions when they do 40 foot wide lots. And I guess um, moving with that, um, and I think you said it that this still goes along with how the layout is supposed to be or is looking to be in that area. It's further out past that downtown business space, according to our comprehensive plan, right? Like yeah, to... it, it's just in the sort of in the neighborhood area. Okay. So there wasn't plans for any, or at least on the comprehensive plan, like downtown mixed use or anything like that. It's, it's just neighborhoods meant to be um, single family, two family, um, townhome kind of uh, units. Okay, and so would that make it stand out more because it'll be the largest lot in the space? No, there are bigger lots. I mean, in terms of their configurations, I mean, right near it is the the Bloor House. That's an entire city block. Um, it would it would just be have a long backyard. That's all it really would be. Um, Those were my reasons. Uh, the parking comments. Yeah, and their original plan was to put the the duplexes, the long, elongated duplexes, and now they're just going to put a single family home there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Opposed. Motion passes uh, five to two. Move on right along. Number uh, twenty-two. Just to make to make it clear, the motion passed to fail, to it's not approve, to passed. deny. I'm sorry. Yes. Passed to deny. Fine. Uh, all right. Consideration, discussion, and possible action on subdivision short form. Uh, for final flat of Los Estrados North subdivision, two lots on 0.7, uh, 69 acres more or less, located at 13301 East U.S. Highway 290 Miami, Texas, and then filed with a variance from Maine Code of Ordinance, Chapter 10, Exhibit A, Article 3, Section 45, 6, and 7, related to lot shape. So these were the, the two lots that are being created at Greg Manor and 290. I have a an angle to them due to the thirty four wide water line easement. Okay. Is there a motion on the floor? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a subdivision subdivision short form final plat for the Las Entradas North subdivision two lots on zero point seven six nine acres, more or less, and located at thirteen three zero one East US Highway two ninety. Maynard, Texas, and being filed with a variance from Maynard Code Ordinances, Chapter 10, Exhibit A, Article 3, Section 45, 6, and 7, related to lot shape. Uh, motion on the floor by Councilmember Ryan. Was there a second? I second. Any questions? Uh, second by uh, Councilmember Wallace. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Um, first reading consideration discussion possible action on a special use permit for a medical clinic located at southwest corner of U.S. Highway 290 and Great Manor Road, Manor, Texas. Um, this is the one we talked about for the medical clinic in combination with Travis County EMS. Are there any additional questions, Council, for the, uh, Mr. Dunlop? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion to approve the first reading of a specific use permit for a medical clinic located at the southwest corner of two U.S. Highway 290 and Greg Manor Road, Manor, Texas. Uh, motion before by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Weir. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes.
24. Um, consider a suggestion of possible action, awarding a bid or plan review and inspection services. Yes, sir. Sure. <clears throat> so um, we solicited four bids from various companies to uh, enter into a contract uh, if awarded for plan review and inspection services. Uh, right now, the city where we have a contract for inspections with ATS, um, and they do about 30% of our inspections. Um, we previously used Bureau of Veritas, um, and then when we brought on board uh, our building official, Greg Eller, um, he did, at the time, most of our, uh, he did all of our plan review, still does, and um, building inspections. Um, and then Bureau of Veritas handled, like, if he went on vacation. Um, as we've grown, been doing a lot more inspections. Um, we uh, obviously created positions for two inspectors. Uh, one has been filled. Uh, we still have an open position for one. Um, but we did switch from Bureau of Veritas to ATS. Um, and initially, the plan was to use them also, again, when, uh, you know, Greg was off or we needed, you know, on call or uh, inspection services, but with the growth we've had and that we're short an inspector, um, they handle about 30% of our inspections daily. Um, uh, and it's been fine. Um, the, I mean, they're, they're a fine company, but um, again, as we're growing, we're getting larger projects that are coming in, specifically the multifamily stuff. Um, and as we know, crossings coming in, all those large commercial users um, and all the interest that we're getting from industrial um, plan review is beginning to take up a lot of Greg's time. And because he's also an inspector, um, there's just not enough time. And so there's also an open position for a plans examiner, which we really haven't gotten anyone applied for at this time. Um, and so we're looking to enter into a new contract with another company uh, or ATS if you were awarded to them, but um, a, a larger contract for plan review and inspection services. And so we went to um, Bureau Veritas, ATS, Safe Built, and AOCA, uh, who all provide those services in this area. Um, and our recommendation is for safe built um, they had uh, the best cost for plan review and inspection services when those were combined um, so the intent would be um, for whoever's awarded the contract that they would be given a project so once it um, it comes in and we you know create it into a permit they basically get it for plan review and inspections because um, all these companies do just plan review or just inspections and then um, some of them have varying rates um, you know if you do both um, but safe built was the the best in terms of cost for plan review and inspection services across most project types. Um, they also have a standard turnaround time of ten days when they get it, five days on resubmittal. Uh, and one really nice point was they do um, uh, pre-submittal meetings at no cost. Um, the second uh, lowest uh, applicant or submitter was Aoka, but um, they have a cost for their kind of pre-submittal meetings. Um, so safe built doesn't they'll meet with they'll bring in their co-professionals uh, and meet with applicants um, prior to submittal uh, which is a very nice benefit um, I guess if you have any questions and then the the recommendation again since this isn't awarding a, a full contract this is um, authorizing staff to enter into a contract and then for the city manager to execute after legal review yes it's out now but contract review by legal <laughs> Um, well, how would we know that y'all not entering in a contract that costs too much money? Uh, so the cost is based on the amount of projects they use. So they provide their fee schedule, which uh, I combined into a table, which you know, shrunk. But um, was there a cap on the last one? No. No. Okay. So just as as the services are needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then hopefully, as we you know get on another inspector and a plans examiner, this service can drop to really only as needed. Like if we get a really special project that comes in or something that we're having to be overwhelmed that month, they can take on that one project. Um, and all of these companies are aware that we are trying to become fully staffed and be less reliant on their services. Um, so they know that their the amount of work they can see will fluctuate. Um, but at this time, we would anticipate using them for pretty much anything that isn't, you know, a single family or like a duplex kind of uh, small residential. Um, so all the commercial and industrial and multifamilies that we're getting. Okay. Uh, questions on motion? If I may add, this also does 
represent some of our cost savings because uh, Safe Built is cheaper than ATS, and they also charge um, per stop, not per inspection. Yeah. yeah. So um, even if we utilize them the same as we're using ATS right now, we'll save money. So. And I will say to council that the way our fee structure is built, um, it's really um, the fees are paying for themselves. So. <laughs> So I think we're good, not necessarily dipping into um, the fund that's uh, that's collecting the fees. All right. We got a motion on the floor. Mayor and Council, I'd like to make a motion that we, um, the city, that we award a plan review and inspections services bid to Safe Built and for the city manager to execute the contract for services pending uh, after legal review. We have a motion for by Councilwoman Wallace. Is there a second? A second. A second by Councilwoman Mesco. Any questions to the motion? Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed, motion passed unanimously. 25, consideration, discussion, possible action on to authorize land and police department to engage, uh, excuse me, to enter into a Agreement with American Signal uh, Corporation for the purchase and deployment of a storm war uh, warning sign system. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good, Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, currently, the only way we have to notify our citizens of uh, severe storms coming in is through our Nixle alert system or social media. Uh, by purchasing these uh, storm sirens, that gives us another uh, way to enhance public safety by alerting the community of uh, dangerous weather coming in. Uh, council members that were here back in 2019, this is one of the things that we talked about, uh, wanted to bring to, um, it was on a long list of things we talked about, uh, uh, improvements that we wanted to see happen. So um, uh, thank you, Colin and Chief, for um, getting this together, working with staff to bring this to us. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, my only question is, um, maybe I missed it. How, what's the uh, the time for installation? That I do not know, Mr. I Moore. think they had indicated uh, 12, 12 weeks. Okay. So I think that'll get us around Christmas time. It could be sooner. Like I said, I think with all the, the the storms we had prior to the summer, um, we just, we've seen a lot of uh, tornadic activities around the country. And like you said, you've, you've asked, you've inquired, and, and we thought just timing-wise, even during the budget process, we had mentioned to the budget committee, uh, this would be one of the things uh, we thought that the citizens would see that why wait and then be an afterthought. We wanted to be, again, try to be a little proactive and, and, and utilize our existing uh, so lift stations. So I think on the map you see each location of the existing lift station with a backup power, and that would give us uh, if there's down lines, we should still have backup power to uh, set off the alarms. And and basically those are outside, so it doesn't mean if you're watching TV on the inside you won't hear. It. But at least if you're outside and and then through all the weather alerts to emergency preparedness, uh, we can sound the alarms. And we talked about maybe doing a weekly tests or somehow to show that that we're gonna make sure that these are tested once they're installed and not just in an emergency. No, we're gonna develop that protocol so people won't think there's something coming and do it at either high noon or somewhere that's not just in the middle of the night. So we'll get that all established once uh, once they're installed. Would also like to add, um, if something does, they can be activated through NOAA. If they put out a, a weather warning for us, they can automatically be activated. Or if our patrol officers and supervisors are out driving around at night and they see something, a tornado come down and it hadn't had time to hit NOAA yet, the patrol supervisors will have the ability to set it off immediately also. Okay. Um, it seems like those two are part, kind of close. And, and just, just out of wondering, um, because we do have, it, this area is concentrated definitely over our city limits, but we do have a large group of folks that are not in our city limits on these kind of to the east, west, and south. Um, uh, are there other, do they have systems that cover those areas? 
or would it be kind of a thing where, you know, there's a gap between a certain space in Austin all the way to Miami, and then this group is going to um, be able to get a sign for everyone outside the rabbit holes. Right. The uh, color-coded, um, the green, if they're anywhere in the green, you'll be able to hear it. That 70 to 80 decibels, just so you know what um, – 80 decibels, like if, if your neighbor's playing a music and you call call us out there, we'll have a decimal meter. And if it's uh, below 80 decibels, then that's not uh, a violation of state law for disorderly conduct. Okay. So at 80 decibels out at that range, you should still be able to hear it pretty good. Um, yeah, no, uh, I understand the whole green thing. I'm just wondering, like, you know, this is there are other systems in the area do, do we know that as far as i know this will be the first one i believe uh, round rock and or some round rock or georgetown somewhere over there i think they're the only one in the whole metro area that has the outdoor warning systems um elgin doesn't either so, i'm sorry elgin doesn't i, I do not know okay. I've, I've never heard of them having it i've never seen uh, the sirens because they're up pretty pretty tall and i've never seen any when i've been in downtown elgin or driving through there i've never seen one over there okay I was, the only reason I was asking, I was thinking if they wanted to go in on some of these and spread it out to get more coverage. That could that could definitely be a possibility to work with the uh, the county and uh, mm -hmm. the other cities. Yeah, because all that area that's east, northeast area, they're going to have a ton of homes. And if nobody's covered and they know that they can, you know, put in fifty or $60,000 to move one of them northeast, because I, I don't know how much it would be just to, to add one, but I mean, it's, it should be fairly simple for them to say, hey, we want to get in on this with y'all and uh, just get them with our, our vendor. And and we are covering a good portion of the county. Right? Correct. Area. So that so maybe I'm talking to them about, hey, we're covering your area. Um, at least that whole eastern part. Mm -hmm. That's all of their area. Mm -hmm. See, just to ask in the corner. Yeah, I'll talk to Chief Phipps, and when you reach out to the Elgin Chief, and uh, see if they have any, and uh, and then the sheriff herself, and see that she'll probably refer us to their emergency management people. But okay. so, and I was going to say too, Mayor, and as we continue to plan and build out these subdivisions and neighborhoods, this could be one of the things keeping this map before us is make sure the developers see if there's going to be a lack of coverage with this. 200, 300 home build out, we might can suggest they incorporate that into their their development. Like we talked about having some land set aside for future facilities. We can make sure that's a designated area for a siren to go for that particular neighborhood that won't have that actual coverage that you're seeing now. Okay. Um, where we at? Motion? Is there a motion on the floor? Oh, we got a question. Yeah. That's fair. Clarification, um, Mayor, Council Members, Veronica Rivera, Assistant City Attorney. Um, the agreement can be negotiated by the police department, but if you make a motion, the mayor would need to execute the agreement, um, not a department head. And um, again, we ask if there is an actual agreement and this isn't a, a quote just for purchasing, that it also be reviewed by legal. Did y'all get that? <laughs> <laughs> reviewed by legal, basically, right? And the mayor has to execute. Yes. All right. Got you. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve and authorize the Maynard Police Department to enter into an agreement with American Signal Corporation for purchase and deployment of a storm warning siren system in the amount not to exceed $196,638.84 and authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement with legal after legal review. Well, uh, motion on the floor by Councilman Moreno. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Musbar. Uh, questions to the motion? Uh, I had a question. Go ahead. 
Um, and you answered some of it, but my additional question was, and it was in per- pertaining to like the um, the number of sirens that we have, but also like the location of them. And so no matter what, it will, where it's actually planted is where it would, re- it would have that 100 decibel sound. Mm-hmm. Is that right? It's very, very loud. The closer to it that you are, the louder it's going to yeah. be. Okay. Yeah. And so. I'm totally concerned about them being right there in the neighborhood. Um, but if, you know, because like if it's still loud music in the main space um, and they still can hear it, um, well, here's the question. Who did the company um, suggest these or are they movable? The, the company, I believe you have to have it so many mile radius between each location to maximize the coverage. And, uh, and if they're in a residential area and there's a tornado coming through at three o'clock in the morning, you're going to want it to be loud. I think what she's saying is that looks like that's in somebody's backyard. So I, specifically that's what, uh, that's Carrot Hills. And that's the lift station at Carrot Hills. On the, uh, they're all all of them are at lift stations, correct? But they're and yeah. that's the justification. Patient is because they're the connected to power. A, a backup station. Yes, ma'am. Um, none of them are going to be in anyone's any on in anyone's backyards. They'll be all, all on city property and uh, that it's already ex- existing. I stay next to these, so I definitely know, <laughs> and I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, it's definitely a wake up you don't want to hear. But then also being in the vicinity of it is not that bad. But I understand what I'm saying is a concern, but it's clearly nothing we can do about it because we don't have lift anywhere else or backup powers anywhere else. Um, I, okay. You got to speak with earplugs. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood your question earlier, but I understand it now. So. You do? Okay. I was just trying to feel for the residents that will be in this area and why they're so close in some areas, knowing that they'll still be able to hear it. But yeah, a lot of them uh, where I worked at before, a lot of them were near the uh, city water towers or in city parks that, that are in the middle of the neighborhoods. Um, I, I don't know the best place to put them other than on current city property without telling, hey, we need to use the alleyways. That's, I, I don't know, a better option for it. Yeah, your little red dot is right over my house, too. Nope. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't push the button on accident in the middle of the night. Any other questions? My only last question was um, the beginning of installation. Do they all have to go up at the same time or will they, or could they be over that 18 week period? Like there's one or two here and there. I believe they will all be installed within that time frame. I don't know if it all, I don't know how long it takes to put one of them up, um, but within, I believe it was 12 weeks, um, but they will all be up and should be operational within the 12 week period i'll pass out complimentary earbuds <laughs> to my community <laughs> all right uh any other questions being none all in favor opposed motion passes thank you well thank you All right, City Council will now uh, convene into uh, executive session pursuant to the provisions of uh, Chapter 551 Texas Government Code according to uh, what the authority contained in Section 551.071 of Section 551.087 Texas Government Code, Section 5, uh, 1.05, Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct to Southern League Council Guard and Charter Member Pitt. Section 5.1.074 personnel matters to deliberate their duties and performance of city management. Section 5.1.071 text government code. Section 1.05 text disciplinary rules of professional conduct to consult legal counsel regarding council member stipends. And Section 5.1.071 Section 5.1.087 text government code to deliberate on acquisition of real property. We will go with 
uh, HR first, and then uh, and try to land an acquisition of real property.
back on. City Council will now reconvene into open session pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 551 Texas Government Code and take action if any or items discussed during a uh, closed executive session. There are no items to discuss. This meeting is adjourned at uh, 9.43 p.m.